Does the design of your website matter? This question is more fascinating than you think. By asking it, it can help provide insight into what really makes a good website tick and what you should spend more time focusing on when making an effective website. At a first glance to this question, it seems to have a very straightforward answer. Does the design of your website matter? Of course it does. A good design builds trustworthiness, rememberability, professionalism, and a way to express your website's brand. But the more I look into this, I question whether a website's design actually contributes to results and its success, or if it's all just theory. What made me begin questioning this is I started to notice a pattern in successful websites. But the thing was, not all the websites followed the ideal design aesthetic. In fact, a lot of them look like complete shit to today's web design standards. So what's going on here? If design is so important, then how do these websites get results? Before I jump into some examples, it's important to know what I mean by design. Design is commonly split up into two categories, UI and UX. UI is the user interface, or how the website looks, or the aesthetics. And UX is user experience, which refers to user behavior and ease of use when using a website. A lot of the time UI and UX do cross over, but there are clear distinctions of both. For example, if someone were to say that they couldn't find what they were looking for, that's user experience. Bad UI could be where someone says, this shit looks outdated. I think most commonly when people say a website's design is bad, it's because of UI not being good enough or up to modern standards. To explore the importance of design, let's first look at some examples to see if we can find what makes a successful website and if it has anything to do with design at all. I have four examples to look over, and the fourth one is the most interesting. Amazon is my first example. In terms of design, Amazon is nothing special. Hell, it looks at least six years old. Some of the buttons still have gradients on them, which is a web design trend from 2010, though they've updated some buttons recently. The product pages don't look like the design was thought out at all. The content doesn't even line up on the product pages, and there are far too many different types of headings and textiles going on. It's not like Amazon can't be redesigned, because people have done it very well in the past. Just look at Wallace's Amazon redesign on Behance. With some minor design tweaks, it completely modernizes it while still fitting its aesthetic and brand. Amazon definitely has the capacity and employees to be making these design updates, but why haven't they? If design is so important, why aren't they paying more attention to it? My next example is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is actually an interesting case when it comes to design, because it's barely changed over the years. This is what Wikipedia looked like in June of 2017, four years ago. And this is what it looks like today. There's very little difference design-wise, and for the most part, it stayed the same. It's not to say that Wikipedia's outdated website design goes unnoticed, because there are even Chrome extensions out there that change the design of the website to a more modern aesthetic. But if it's such an issue for its users, surely they would have addressed it by now, right? My third example is any local web design agency. I'm kind of putting myself on the spot here, but if you Google web design plus the name of the city or state you live in, just look at the website designs of the local web agencies that design websites professionally. Based on the searches I've done, the majority of the agency websites that show up don't have a great design at all, a lot of them even looking outdated. These are the people with the very means and motive to have a great designed website, and yet a lot of them, if not the majority, don't have a modern website design. Working at an agency myself, I know the primary reason why agencies don't update their websites is that they just don't have time with all the client work that comes through. But aren't agencies supposed to practice what they preach by having an up-to-date design? Even searching for agencies in competitive areas like San Francisco still return websites with outdated designs. Again, if design was so important, why isn't it a bigger priority for a lot of web design agencies? 
My fourth and last example is the NN group, and it's the most interesting example. The Nielsen Norman group is a leading research group focused on user experience, particularly web design. Now in 2021, their website looks good. In fact, it looks quite up to date. Where it becomes interesting is that in 2018, blueads.com nominated it for one of their five ugly website designs that still make a lot of money article. They go on to question how a website focused on such a web design focused topic could be a victim to do as we say, not as we do. They note things like how the website used to be jarring and plain, but despite that, they said about the website, it's impossible to get lost with key topics linked intuitively throughout, and the design shows excellent insight into the user's personas that visit the website. So the design wasn't anything to get excited for, but the user experience was good? Sounds like UX. What if the NN group only focused on the user experience aspect of their design because they intuitively knew that UI design wasn't as nearly important? That it was in fact a solid user experience that drove the success of the website, not UI? Before I ask too many questions, let's look at some numbers. Let's explore some studies of how a good design makes a measurable positive impact. Now, there are dozens of statistics and studies done out there on the influence a website's design has, but a lot of them either cite four or four sources or just state something without having a case study to back it up. But here are the two I did find. The business's website design accounts for 75% of the evaluation of a company's credibility. And 59% of people prefer a beautifully designed website over something simple or plain. Those were the most related, backed up statistics I found that helps prove the importance of a website's design. I'm sure there are more studies out there about how X color is more effective than X color for sales, but when you're making a website for a client, you're constrained by brand guidelines, so I won't include those. Let's figure out what these stats really mean and if they hold any insights. The first study says the business's website design accounts for 75% of the evaluation of a company's credibility. This references a Stanford study, and in the study, they outline 10 ways a website builds credibility. If you look at their 10 ways to show credibility, five of them have to do with user experience, four of them have to do with good content, and only one of them has to do with the UI design of your website. Half the credibility of your website was based on UX alone, you say? Maybe there's a pattern here. The other study is 59% of people prefer a beautifully designed website over something that's simple and plain. I think this does promote the importance of having a great UI, but I think because it's only a 9% difference from people being impartial, it doesn't hold much merit. And more importantly, just because someone prefers a beautifully designed website over a simple one, doesn't mean it translates to improved results by having one. Does this study hold any value? Maybe, maybe not. Let's look at an actual website to see what UI and UX can look like. This is Rollshare.com. This website has nice UI. It has a good color scheme, the two fonts it uses pair well with each other, the images match the aesthetic, overall it looks fairly modern. However, this website is by no means good or effective. After just a couple seconds of using it, you'd also realize that the website is frustrating to use and doesn't have a good user experience. The above the fold section isn't informative at all. There's auto playing sliders, and awkward layouts. When judging a website's design, it's easy to get fooled by good UI, but having a bad UX will always affect the bottom line and the user's experience. Now let's summarize everything I've been trying to say up to this point. The fonts, colors, animations, border radiuses, shadows, or brand guidelines don't have as big as an impact as you think. As of right now, there aren't too many studies looking into this. Ideally, in the future, I can set up an A-B test to see if a very modern, attractive website outperforms a more simplistic designed one while still keeping the same layout, content, and colors, but just without the flair. So yes, 
put some effort into your website's design because there's going to be some people that you'll have to please, whether it be your boss, your clients, or even yourself. But just know what really contributes to a website's success. What makes a website effective and get results is a great user experience and then a good UI to complement it, not the other way around. A website's aesthetic doesn't have to be complicated. Stay away from Comic Sans and Wingdings and you'll be fine. I suggest to you that instead of spending 20 minutes trying to figure out if your pop-up should have a 5 pixel border radius or a 15 pixel one, you instead explore the power of user experience. This will make you a better web designer and enable you to make better and more effective websites for you and your clients. I will even put a link in the description for you to get started. Not to mention a website is only as good as the business or product behind it, so if your business sucks there's no amount of design updates that will save it.